it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Today I have got this project for you. I am thinking of this as a more masculine project, uh, but you could change the colours and make it more feminine if you wished. I am using one of the celebration stamps because it's celebration time. Um, and it's the Home to Roost set, which I, I just love. I really enjoyed the Pleasant Pheasants from the Autumn Winter Catalogue that sadly hasn't carried over. Um, but this is kind of the spring summer version of that. So that's certainly the way I'm looking at it. It's not, a, I always say this, I always say it's not a complicated card to put together. It's, it's actually not. There are a few techniques, but it's, I'm going to show you how they're done. So first thing we're going to do is talk about the corrugated background, the corrugated, um, sorry, I'm using post-it notes for some of this. Um, so one of the textured impressions, um, dynamic textured impressions embossing folders from the autumn winter catalogue was the corrugated one. This has carried over. Now there is a knack to using this. Firstly, I would not recommend using it on vellum. But the second thing to know is that um, I've already prepared this one. If I get this one out of the way, I'm hoping you can see that it's really very deep. Um, it's probably deeper than the vast majority of our textured impressions embossing folders. Um, and it's it's a bit like the final result is a bit like uh, we used to be able to get um, a thing that was a bit like a looked a bit like a brayer, but you fed you fed your card through this thing and twisted the handle and it corrugated it for you. And that's the, the effect you're getting. But in doing that, you end up with your cardstock shrinking. And it shrinks by, for this size cardstock, and obviously the, long, the longer your piece of cardstock, the more concertinaing it's going to do, so the more it's going to change. But this it was one of my basic bases, which is five and five eighths, by three and seven eighths, so we're look, talking three and seven eighths width, and it lost about a centimetre or three eighths of an inch. So just bear that in mind. So if you want it to be the same width as you start with, so if you want it to be three and seven eighths wide, you need to add three eighths onto your width. So that will take it up to four inches. Um, so just bear that in mind. Now, I'm very happy to have it so that it sits on top of uh, a mat that was the original size. So I have trimmed down my card to make it shorter. But this is the width that it, it was when it started. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I will try and explain that on my blog post as well. But well, that's quite a long explanation and that will take up quite a lot of the post. But that's fine. Anyway, so this is crumb cake. And just bear in mind that that is what's going to happen. It is going to shrink. Uh, you want to try and get it into your embossing folder so it's straight, because otherwise you're going to have skew with lines, which is not a happy look, unless that's what you're going for, in which case, yay. Um, so that's that I've already prepared. The other things we are going to use are a standard A5 piece of card, scored down the middle and that's going to be folded in half to make a standard A6 card base. I have a piece of shaded spruce that is cut at three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. I've got a piece of shaded spruce that is the largest of the layered squares, but you could cut this by hand and it is roughly two and three quarters square. And it's so that it fits with the largest of the stitched shape framelits in the square. Um, so as I say, you can you could cut it manually at two and three quarter inches or thereabouts. Um, this is fractionally over, but it's good as. Um, but that gets you a nice a nice border. And then this is obviously just plain whisper white. So the first thing I am going to do is stamp. So I've got I've got the one I'm using as my guide ready. I've already mounted, and these are cling mount, just as the new spring summer catalogue have gone cling mount. So anything that is red rubber in celebration is cling mount. So there is now only the choice of 
photopolymer, which are the clear stamps, or cling, which are the red rubber, other than in the annual catalogue, which does still have the clear mount and the uh, wood mount, but they will be going. So I'm going to stamp this towards the bottom right hand corner of my piece of Whisper White. Just make sure that's well stamped, which it is. That's all I need that for. So I'll pop him, oh, pop that there, pop him there, out of the way. And then uh, the other ones that we're going to be using are the kind of corn wheat in the background and just a note. And I'm actually going to stamp the just a note first, purely because I'm going to put a mask over this and I want to make sure that it's fully dry first. The only other ink pad we are using is crumb cake, so it goes with the crumb cake base or mat. And this I'm just going to stamp. This is just a sliver off cut, and this is what, an off cut that I get from uh, when I do my card bases or my mats. So that's just a note. Um, and then we're going to trim that down just a fraction at this end. And I'm just doing it by eye with my snips. And then I'm using as ribbon, um, this comes in a duo, this is shaded spruce and it comes in a duo with, um, I think it's petal pink, powder pink. Let's check which one is it? No, it's petal pink. It's the new pink. It's this one, petal pink. And this is from the Abstract Impression Suite, Garden Impression Suite. I uh, can't remember what it's called, stupidly didn't look it up, um, which is in the annual catalogue and you get both reels, um, but it was because it comes in shaded spruce that it was the attraction, because I wanted shaded spruce. And all I'm going to do is just tie this in a knot round this longer end of the, um, the piece I've just stamped on and I will adjust exactly where it is once I've got it in a knot, and all I'm doing is tying it in a reef, reef knot or square knot. Uh, depends what your background is as to whether you call it a reef knot or a square knot. Uh, I was a dinghy sailor in my youth, um, and I was in the Navy Reserve as an adult. So for me, this is a reef knot. Um, but, you know, same knot, reef, square, up to you. And then just trim that down. We will be trimming that again, but not until we've kind of put things a bit more together, because uh, I want it to come to the edge of the corrugated piece. So, uh, although I could of course start that, putting that together now, because that's going to go down there. No, mm, will I? Shall I? Shall I? Yes, I think I shall. So, there's a key to this. Because this is corrugated, you want to make sure that you actually get adhesive sticking to the corrugated bits. So I'm putting a piece of, or a bit of, multi-purpose liquid adhesive there and then running more across the back here. This is more than I would normally use, but that's because we have less surface area to stick to. And then I'm just going to pop this down at the bottom here. And that then should stick nicely. I'm just going to pop that to one side with a block over the top of it, just to help body and soul stick together. Um, it just helps everything stick down. Right, so back to finishing this off. Um, as I say, I'm using a couple of post-it notes. One just to mask at the bottom here, because I don't really want, if I, yeah, no, that's about right. Um, I don't want the stamp to go over the bottom. And then I've just cut a mask out of a post-it note um, of the rooster. I'm not f too worried that it's, you know, 100% accurate. I tend to cut inside the line rather than outside the line because that way the stamp will co go closer to the stamp set, uh, closer to the stamp. You may see here that there are bits missing. The neater you trim it, the more chance there is of the ink actually getting to the surface of your card. Um, and the problem is that because you've got your post-it note, it acts as a as a buffer, um, so it doesn't it doesn't get the the stamp can't get completely flat. So we're inking up and stamping off, and then just come in so that 
you can see where your stamp's going and then press as hard as you can, particularly where the uh, rooster is so that you can get this as, as close to the card as you possibly can. And then this is coming the other side and again, press as hard as you can. And this is one moment where I would actually say, don't rock your stamp, but do make sure that you're getting all surfaces as close to that paper as you possibly can. And then that's the stamping all done. Peel off the mask to use for later and you can see that because I was really quite firm I've managed to get quite close uh, with my corn, I'm calling it corn, um, to the rooster which is kind of what we want. Right, now we've just got to colour in and stick together. Hurrah, nearly done. So I have got some blends. I've got two, three lots, sorry, of um, duos. I've got shaded spruce. Um, oh, my brain's gone. Cajun craze and soft suede. So it's a nice bright cockerel. Um, I'm going to start by putting in a bit of shaded spruce on his tail. Uh, I'm not going to go mad, but just a bit of the dark. I don't mind if I come outside the lines because this is a very loose sketch of a cockerel. And then with the brush end, having used the bullet end for the dark, I'm coming in with the light. And I just find that that gets a, a better kind of, well, a better brush. Um, and again, as this is a sketch, I don't mind if I go outside the lines but it just softens the softens the whole effect a bit. Just pop some in there. And it also means you can kind of join up where the stamping didn't necessarily join up. Um, it just gives you that opportunity to fill in the gap. Right, so let's take the dark Cajun craze and I'm just going to scribble. And I really do mean scribble along the bottom there. And then fill in across the back and then this area here I just want a bit um, a bit of dark and then the comb and this bit here I'm going to leave the eye white because they tend to be I'm told I don't know Actually, I'm that to be that's better and then again come in with the light and I'm using the brush end just fill in and overlap a bit where you've taken the dark just to soften the edges a wee bit you don't want to completely obliterate them but it gets a smoother um, a smoother finish and then dark soft suede and again I'm going to scribble. I'm not worried if I go over the Cajun craze. This is a loose drawing. So just put a shadow in there and then again coming in with the brush end of my light I'll just fill that in. And I've just realised the bit that I missed on my original, which is this bit, which I just want just want him to be treading on something. So we'll just add that in. And again we can join up the bits that might might have missed. So here we're not quite joined up. And now we are. So that's all of that done. And then all we've got to do is stick the whole thing together. So let's start with folding our card. And I always fold towards the mountain of the crease. I do that with both um, Whisper White, Very Vanilla and the coloured cardstock. Oh, there is a theory that you should only do it on the um, Whisper White and the Very Vanilla. I find that it works perfectly well on all of them. And then I'm just adding a 
a bit of liquid adhesive on the back there. Pop that down so that we're sort of square. There we go. Then a bit of a very small amount of liquid adhesive on the back of this, only because Whisper White and the multi-purpose liquid adhesive, if you get too carried away, they're not great chums. Uh, you could use Snail instead for that, but as we're using liquid adhesive for everything else, let's just go with liquid adhesive. Right, bring in our piece of crumb cake, and from the back, just trim off the edge of the just a note and then we know that's going to be straight and again we need to make sure that the raised portions have got glue so I'm actually going to be quite careful about adding glue down the edges because that way we know that we've got glue where we really really need it which is right on the edge the rest of it I can just rub across and it's basically only going to pick up where there is a raised area anyway which is fine and then just pop that into the middle of our shaded spruce bit because it's liquid adhesive we do have a little bit of wiggle room and then same again let's just make sure that we've got a reasonable amount on the back and again this is much more than I would usually use but because we need to hit the raised areas I am being a little more generous and then we'll pop that kind of square at the top and there we go. Now you may want just to make absolutely perfectly sure to do that with your card, just to make sure that it's hit the corrugated bit. But um, for the moment, there you are. That is our very much, I would say, a more masculine look. Um, I hope you found that enjoyable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you would like any celebration items, remember they are free. You just have to spend £45 or more over in my online store. And for every £45 you spend, you will be allowed to, or encouraged indeed, to choose a celebration item. The celebration item uh, catalogue is over on my website, which is linked immediately below here in the description bar. Um, if you click on that link to the associated blog post, that will take you to this post. Um, and then from there you can find the catalogue tab and there you will find the annual catalogue, the spring, summer and the celebration catalogues um, and you can browse through those in PDF form and you can also order your own um, paper copy just by completing the request form. Um, if you don't work with a demonstrator in the UK at the moment then please do do that uh, and I'll be very happy to send you a copy free um, and I work on the premise that if you've if you've ordered your catalogue from me you may well order from me as well so you know it's it's my way of encouraging you to shop with me um, if you I should say when you shop with me do use the host code which is below and over on the blog post um, if your order is over 150 pounds don't but if it's under 150 pounds if you use the host code then I combine all of the orders that use that host code over the course of a month and then all the host rewards that are earned across those orders, I will divide up between everybody who had ordered and then uh, everyone who has ordered, no matter how large or small your order, will get something that I have selected that I then send out to you about the middle of the following month. Whether you use the host code or not, you will always get a handmade card from me. You will always get a handmade gift. Um, and for every £30 you spend using the host code, you also get a Sunflower reward, which you can save up and then trade in for free product. All the details of that are over on my blog. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!